G'day and welcome to the Breathless Blog once again. Thanks for stopping by. Um, today, after a pretty full on week where I've had a trip to Sydney and plenty of shoots and plenty of editing, I want to stop and share my number one tip with you and the thing that I changed in my approach to shooting weddings that I found has made the world of difference. And uh, once again, just after a wedding I photographed on Friday, uh, just brought it into stark realization for me and something that, uh, yeah, in the days that follow, I just can't seem to shake and uh, I feel is really worth sharing with you. So, hands up who has ever, if you're sitting there as a photographer, uh, when you started out of photography and someone said to you, hey, would you ever consider uh, photographing a wedding that you basically broke into a cold sweat, shut it at the thought and said, no way, not ever, no if." when butts amount of money could possibly get me to do that. It's far too stressful, I'm not interested. Um, yeah, you can take it. Sounds pretty familiar, right? Um, so I was absolutely no different. I know before I've shared my little story about turning down quite a few weddings before I got my best mate who was also shooting weddings at the time to, to come in as the primary shooter and I just sort of you know, dovetailed in as his second shooter. And, and I guess that, what's that, 2013, 14? Um, sort of snowballed into a lot more regular weddings and now to a point where as a professional photographer I, I shoot several of them a year and absolutely love doing them um, and they're just the best times and certainly just the things that reignite um, I love photography and storytelling and and just make me so grateful to actually have been part of people's special day um, I think when I've been thinking about this and processing this whole idea and sort of shift of mentality, uh, even this the last couple of days since the wedding I had on Friday, uh, is that I think the temptation as a photographer on any given wedding day is to acknowledge the pressure but succumb to the pressure. You know, like I'm not here to say that there's no pressure on a wedding day. Of course there is. Like that's the job. You're the photographer. People trust you to turn up to photograph a wedding and get some beautiful get some beautiful photos for them but um, you know the fact that they pay you if you're being paid or what if they the fact that they even ask you um, that's only part of the reason that they trust you so I would say that the price tag that people offer you is not enough to make them trust you on the day now that might sound really uh, a little bit crazy you know if someone pays you hundred bucks, thousand dollars, five grand, 10, 20 grand or whatever, surely, surely then that they would trust you to photograph the most important part of their day or most important day of their life. Yes, but I wanna talk a little bit more about their trust and how it works for you as a photographer and how you actually engage with people. Now, <coughs> excuse me. One of the dangers I feel is that on a wedding day, when we, if we do succumb to that pressure and let it get a bit too much for us, is that we go insular. We internalise the stresses and the pressures and what's going on and the expectations and the, you know, you're not good enough and, you know, there's so many better wedding photographers than you and, you know, oh, that'd be right. Look, it's bright and sunny today. You know, surely you could have got some clouds or, oh, look, it's going to rain. What are you going to do now? Sorry, that is also my dog having a drink. Um, if you can hear him, he just turns up at the most inappropriate of times, but that just is what it is when you've got one take. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, so by, by, by becoming insular, what we're actually doing is taking all the energy that we could be throwing out there to enrich people's day and we're bringing it back into ourself and spending all their energy on our own little demons and personal battles that we're probably fighting. And once we do that, then first of all, we cannot possibly be open to any or as many creative opportunities that are lying in front of us as we can. You could be, if as soon as you go internal in yourself, you could be in the most picturesque, you know, little vineyard in the south of France photographing a you know, wedding in a chateau and you would not pick up the best, um, most beautiful aspects or um, creative energy for yourself if you're just holding all of those things to yourself. But I would say second to that and probably more important to that, by focusing only on yourself, 
you are not offering anyone else that you're interacting with the very best of yourself that you can deliver. So let's think about it. On any given wedding day, you know, people are peaking, emotionally peaking. And I'm not just talking about brides and grooms, I'm talking about the periphery, right? Parents of the bride and groom, or um, you know, close family friends and grandma and granddad and the bridal party, and you've got a florist who's running late with flowers, the cake hasn't been delivered. We've still got reception venues being set up. The priest has had a flat tire. Um, in my wedding case, the photography doesn't turn up until after your ceremony. So like there's so much going on that people are, have a tendency, you know what, and it's human nature, at the smallest inconveniences sometimes to make them into really, really big things. Now this is where as a photographer, your job is so much more crucial than just turning up and taking good photographs to hang on the wall. You're actually a pseudo day manager for that day. Think about, like you are going to spend more time with the brides or the grooms or the bride and grooms than probably anyone else that day. And you're going to spend some of the most intimate time that they have together or by themselves as anyone else during that day. Now let that sink in. In some cases, you've just met these people for the first time. Certainly for me, you know, I always love to catch up with with people before their wedding day so that they, you know, we get to know each other and we can break the ice and it's not, you know, strangers, but, but sometimes that's just the reality. So by actually getting out of your own way, investing your energy, and here's the word, giving, giving 100% of yourself to whoever you're dealing with, what in the interaction that you have, you're actually then tuning into how people are interacting with each other, how they're feeling. You know, the little um, non-verbal cues that people offer. And you, look, we're talking about families coming together here. So on a wedding day, you know, when families come back together, the reality is that there can be tension. That's just the way it is and the way it always will be. As beautiful as wedding days are, sometimes they're a little bit stressful. So by actually having your eyes up, you know, your heart and your mind open to what's happening in the dynamics in the room and, and how people are interacting, you are going to get the best out of those people in any given situation. Now, I mentioned before that the price tag of a wedding for you as a photographer is not enough to gain trust. And I refer to um, even the wedding I had on Friday. Now, the wedding I had on Friday, um, I would have attended as a guest anyway because it so happened to be the wedding of two of my you know, closest and dearest best friends in the whole world. Uh, and I was you know, so humbled enough that they would ask me to, to photograph their wedding. Like that in itself is, is still a bit surreal, to be honest. Um, but I know that even in the, like the countless discussions that we'd had coming into their wedding day, and as well as I know them and they know me, like the hard work's done. We've known each other for years and years. There's still this you know, level of angst and a bit of anxiety and uncomfortableness when it comes to getting your photograph taken. Now, I'm certainly not discrediting any of those feelings because they're real. You know, even if someone's gonna pay me or, you know, ask me to photograph their wedding, that's not enough for them just to be like, okay, you know, here's a few thousand dollars, now turn up and I'm just gonna be completely at ease and relaxed for you to take photographs. It doesn't always work like that. So what you've gotta do, what I 100% just try and do, is give, give the best of me, give the best, um, emotional intelligence <coughs> excuse me sorry because people want to know that their photography is going to turn up and they're going to care about them they're going to invest in their special day they're going to be empathetic to the way they're feeling and what how their guests are feeling and the challenges that are happening on their day because that's real okay so you know i want my the, like nirvana for me is i want my clients to not only walk away from having an experience of me at their wedding and go, hey, like the, the photographs were beautiful. But I want them to say, and you know what? You know, Bro Brody went above and beyond to make sure that we felt comfortable. Um, you know, he was um, engaging with our guests. He made us feel at ease and relaxed. He was relaxed. He was calm under pressure, all of those things. But the only way you can do that is to stop worrying about yourself and just shift your energy and focus outwards to everything you can and to people. People's where it's at. 
So once again, thanks so much for stopping by the Breathless Blog. That's just been what's on my brain the last couple of days after, oh, as I described it to, to my friends, just being high on love Friday. It was just the best day as a friend, but also as a photographer and, oh, I don't know, so blessed to be involved in, in another wedding and another one that I suppose in this instance is particularly special to me because, um, you know, like I said, two of my nearest and dearest mates. Um, hey, if you're a couple looking to get married, I'd love to hear from you and share in your special day. If you're a photographer and you're going through your photographic journey as well, hey, get in touch, shoot us a message. I'd love to hear from you, share a bit more of my story, but more importantly, I'd love to learn more about yours. So until next time, <laughs> that's <laughs> my daughter who's just got out of the bath and needs to be dressed. I'm out. See ya.